Hey, what's up? It's Coach AK. And Chad. <laughs> so, last week we talked about the, the law of attraction. We talked a bit about the, the movie The Secret, the law of attraction, as you just mentioned, taking action. So, not just thinking and visualizing and, and putting things on paper and drawing pictures and printing pictures, but taking action. We talked about stubbing your toe and how to deal with challenges that come along in a funny manner. And we talked about writing goals. So today, the topic is going to be goals. And you've all probably done some of these goal exercises before. We've all heard about the SMART goal, right? The specific, the, the measurable, the blah, blah, blah. We all know it. But today, we're going to try to think, have you think a little bit differently about goal setting. And, and, and really focusing how to reach that goal you're trying to attain. And Einstein once noted that if you want a happy life, tie it to a goal, not to people or things. And the way I take that is that if your happiness in life is determined by people or things, people around you or you know, having things then you may not be as happy as if you have a goal that you're looking to attain and you zone in on that goal and eventually achieve it. So, and what we want to do today is offer you just some information so you have fun going after this. You know, setting goals and achieving goals is super fun. So, so ideally, when we're talking about attaining and achieving these goals, we're hopefully that you are you're, you're throwing away any type of distraction or anything that's limiting your thought process. Like, what is it that you really want? Like, what is it? Think deep down, what is it that you really want? I don't care if your, your mother, your father, your teachers have told you that it's not realistic. What is it that you want? So I think the first step in really deciding of what it is that you want is to identify your internal why, your internal motivation. I'm gonna give you an example. I'm sure on January 1st of every single year, people are setting New Year's resolutions. And it's usually probably along the lines of losing weight. I wanna lose 10 pounds, I wanna lose 20 pounds, I wanna lose 150 pounds, whatever. Bikini bodies. <laughs> but the most important thing I think that that, that, that what keeps people, why they do not continue on their New Year's resolution, probably past January 15th, is because they have not identified their internal why. So I'm gonna show you and go you through an exercise with you. If you wanna lose 20 pounds, ask yourself the first question, why do I wanna lose 20 pounds? Okay, so for example, I wanna lose 20 pounds because I want to be able to fit in this nice bikini. Not me, but I'm just saying, if somebody wants to fit in a bikini, more power to them. Was it beach bodies? Beach bodies. Uh, so that is the first why. The problem is that's where most people stop. They stop at that first why. But I'm going to say, let's go two steps deeper, right? The first one is, okay, I want to get into that bikini body. Ask yourself why again. So what would or why what would losing, getting in that bikini do for you? Well, it would allow me to be more attractive so more guys would talk to me, okay? You got a little bit deeper on that one. Now we ask one more why, go a little bit deeper of, okay, what would happen if you, now guys are now attracted to you, they wanna to talk to you, then what would that do for you? Then it would give me the self-confidence to believe that I'm beautiful and that I, I'm gonna be accepted. So when you really go down to it, your internal why is not to lose 20 pounds, your real goal is to be accepted. And why that's so important is, you can lose 20 pounds and still not be accepted and you won't be happy. Or you can lose five pounds and you realize you found this cute guy that just loves you, or girl, or whatever, and you're fulfilled. So you have to identify your internal why. So personally for me, in college, I was an all-American athlete in college from the University of Oregon. And I was a 400 meter runner. 
And for me, my goal was to be an all-American athlete. That was my goal. So if I was going to ask the same questions to myself, two steps down, it's like my first one was, well, if I'm an all-American athlete, then I'll be able to get a, a bigger scholarship. I wasn't on a full ride scholarship then. So I was like, okay, if I get this, I can have more money to, to, to survive. If you ask me the another why, another step down, that was, what is the scholarship going to do for me? And being one of six and being the youngest, all my brothers and sisters were in college. So to my family, to my parents, that was a hardship. That was difficult. So my internal why was not that I wanted to become an all-American athlete. It was that I can get a scholarship to help out my family so that I don't have to pay for another kid in college. So when I was running down that home stretch, it was my parents that I was thinking about. That's what, that's what got me to not quit. And it wasn't the, the scholarship. So I think the most important thing is identifying that internal why, going two to three steps deeper. And I can, as you're telling me this, as we were talking about this before, you know, it's, it's the passion, man. I can hear the passion in your voice. I can see the passion in that when you were going through that experience, I'm sure it brought you to tears. I'm sure at times, you know, you were thinking, dude, I got to get this done. Whatever it takes. You know, that's a key phrase when it comes to goals. Whatever it takes. And that passion is huge. You know, people that, that I've had the honor of working with, you know, when they have that why, it legit brings them to tears. You know, I have one, one individual that we work with right now who, man, any time she shares her vision of where she wants her family to be, she talks in such clear focus, you know? She has her goal, but at the same time, she has the vision of her life when she achieves that goal, and when she shares it, she, she has a picture of her, her family at a lake on, you know, right next to the water, right on the water. And everyone, the, the kids are having fun going off a rope swing into the water. And as she's telling this, dude, she's, tears start streaming down her face. And she starts, she starts getting real emotional, really fired up, really passionate. So when you feel that way, when you get tingles up and down your spine, you know you got it. You know it's something that's, that's inside of you that, that is the fuel that is getting your, your fire, your internal fire, that fire in your belly going. Mike Dooley noted that, you know, when, when you're thinking about goals, think way outside the box and make sure it is something that, that gets you, you know, gets you with tingles up and down your back, up and down your spine. So, um, yeah, I can, I can feel that, man. You're, that story you're telling, you can feel the, the passion, the energy. I mean, it's there. And I think a lot of people, we talk about the SMART goals, about being realistic and being measurable. I think that's valuable, but I think we're missing the main point. I think the point of a goal is what's going to get you up every single day to do the work that you need to do. So really the second point is, is yeah, we can write it down. Yeah, we can do the work. But when it really comes down to it, what is going to get you up when you are tired, when you face adversity, when nobody else believes in you? What is going to get you up every single day? And if a goal and, that, and whatever that goal is, is able to do that, then you've already succeeded in writing your goal down. That is the most important thing to me, I believe, in setting goals. What's going to keep you focused? What's going to keep you disciplined every single day? No matter who steps in your way to reach it, to be successful. Are there days, AK, when you have your goal in mind? Are there days when you say, dude, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm sick today, man. I don't feel good. I got a headache. Or, you know what? I didn't sleep well last night. Or, yeah, I worked out too hard yesterday, man. I'm just, I'm too sore to do anything today. Do you have days like that? I have those days every single day. So there's always something there that, you know, that can very off course. I mean, we're going to talk about this in, the, in our subsequent call. I don't want to get into too much detail here, but, but dude, that, there are excuses and there are reasons. 
And you can easily turn an excuse into a reason. So you're right, man. You, you wake up, and if it gets you fired up in the morning, then you're, you're ready to go. And on that note, deciding on a date of completion. You know, having that date on the calendar of when you want to achieve your goal, I think is important. Where in, in, in the interim, as you're going towards that goal, have fun with it. Make it a game. You know, set up a, a big poster board with, you know, this is my goal and I'm this far to the goal. And if you find that you're not making enough progress, man, just communicate with people who've already achieved that goal and they can help you, you know, move through obstacles. They can help you take the steps to get there. So, go ahead. Well, I mean, I was going to say, some people think that you're supposed to stay motivated with the same goal for your whole life. Huh. You know, here's what I say. If your whole goal is to get up and t to be successful, to do the work you need to do, maybe that goal at some point no longer motivates you. Then what do you got to do? Make a new goal. That's it. So if you feel yourself unmotivated, maybe it's time for you to rethink your goals, rethink your strategy, reset yourself, realign yourself, reset the goal, and keep on moving. And I'm going to go back to what we were talking about last call on meditation. You know, meditate on it. You know, find a nice quiet room and, and just sit back, close your eyes, or sit in whatever. The meditation position, sitting, cross-legged, whatever. Whatever works for you. And just close your eyes and visualize where you want to be in life, taking your life from good to great. And, you know, you may need to, like you said, reset your gears, you know, shift gears a little bit and, and then reset your, your crosshair, so to speak. Yeah. And, and, and we're going into one of the, the final points and you're, and you're, you're talking about this or touching on this already is I was having a conversation with a friend and we were talking about goal setting. And she brought up three questions, and I think this is so powerful in any goal that you're trying to accomplish. And usually this would be better if it's, you know, maybe even a, a big goal that you're trying to accomplish, not saying my goal is to go to the grocery store, even though this could still work. But the three questions are this. The first one is, why do I want it? So why do I want to run a run a, a a four minute mile okay why is it that i want to run a four minute mile is because i've been training and running a four minute mile would make me feel accomplished the second question is why should i get it the sec and, and for most people that would be like well because i'm going to work really hard and i've been training for years and i just feel like i deserve it because if not them why can't it be me okay for most of us, I think that's where we, we get to. We get to that, those first two, I want it, I should get it, I deserve it, I'm entitled. The third question is the most important. And that is, well, we'll go first is, why should I get it? Or what I want it, why should I get it? And the third one is, why will I achieve it? Why will I get it? And for most of us, that is the most important question. The why will I get it? I can't just say because I want to. That's not, that's not good enough reason. The why will I get it is because, oh, I'm going to decide to write up my workout plan, wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning. I'm, gonna, I'm going to make my nutritional plan. I'm going to track my progress. I'm going to eat right, find the right training partners. I'm going to track my progress. So most of us, we have the first two. Why want it? why I should get it. What we need to add is that third element. This is why I will get it. The specifics, right? It makes you a realization come in to say, I can't be entitled. I actually have to do the work. It relies on me. The work is me. I got to stand up, put one foot in front of the other and get this done. And make it happen. And as we talked about keeping your focus, mm -hmm. you know, you have things that you're going to be doing. You're going to be taking action. But at the same time, we're not responsible for the how of how to get there. You know, we have our why. And once we determine that why, and once we determine that we need to move, put one foot in front of the other to get there, 
the how is not necessarily our responsibility. And, I, and we were chit chatting about about Belichick. You know, Belichick will have a a, a playbook. You know, he gets to the game, but not every one of those plays is going to work. So the the how is going to kind of it's going to unfold. So you're going to work at different things. You're going to get nudges to to take certain actions here and there. Certain people are going to come into your life and they're going to guide you down that path of of those three whys and you keep that focus similar to a photographer. A photographer is gonna, gonna have a, uh, an object in mind that, or an object that is gonna be taking a, he or she's gonna be taking a picture of and it needs to zoom in, it needs to, to bring that target in clear focus. Those three whys are exactly what we're doing with regard to goals. We're, we're bringing the, the goal into clear focus so that then we can you know, decide and, and accept these nudges that are coming at, at us and accept these people that are coming into our lives and, and move forward towards that goal, take the appropriate steps. Right. And, and, and to touch on your, your Belichick example, if we ask those same three whys, so if you ask Belichick, why will, why should we, we score a touchdown on this drive? The first one is, you go, well, we sh- I, I want to score a touchdown on this drive. That would be his first point. The second is the should. Why should I? Because uh, we have the best athletes on the field and you've worked hard. And the third one is, Belichick, why will we get it? Well, on this first passing play, I'm seeing a matchup between, an, an uneven matchup between our wide receiver and our tight, I mean, wide receiver and their quarter cornerback. And we're going to hit this hitch route on this particular route. We're going to get 10 yards on this next play. We're going to see the matchup. So when you understand the why I'm going to get it, there's the specifics and getting that into the focus, like the photographer, when that gets into focus, you know exactly where that matchup is. You know exactly this is a perfect shot and this is going to work. Exactly. And, accept advice accept guidance you know and when you're when you're talking big goals you know you're going to get the appropriate guidance that you're going to need and it's it's hard to it's hard to put this into words because i think you and i in the past you know weeks months since we started chatting i mean things have started to unfold and there's really no way to, to explain it. So here, you know, we're we're looking to we're communicating about goals with our listeners, and and it's really hard to put into words and describe. You know, you zone in on your goal, and if you zone in on your goal, and every time you you you're you know enticed or, or tempted off path, you just come right back to your goal, think your goal, write your goal down, and you keep doing that and, and people start coming into your life that are supposed to come into your life. And like you said, you're going to start surrounding yourself with people who are aligning you with your goal. You start saying that to people and, and it's like, you know, if, if you're not open and accepting to that, that idea, then, I mean, number one, you're not going to recognize what's up. You're not going to recognize what's going on around you. And number two, I mean, your goal is going to start getting further and further away. And I'm going to give you a perfect example. When you buy a new car, when you buy a new car, you, let's say you buy a Volkswagen Beetle. You're going to be driving around in a Volkswagen Beetle. Before the Volkswagen Beetle, before you bought it, you probably never saw Volkswagen <laughs> Beetles. Right? And then once you buy the car, now you see Volkswagen Beetles all over the place. And the same thing is with a goal. It's it gets you focused. You start noticing things. You start seeing things differently. And you almost feel like now all these Volkswagen Beetles are coming into my life. And that's how having a goal that is focused and direct feels like. It feels like everything just coming to you and it's effortless. And here's something to stem off of that. Our whole lives, it's been occurring. We've, we've had things our whole life. We talked last call about the seven years old, we stopped dreaming. Well, we still have those dreams. Mm-hmm. There have been things coming at us our whole life that if we had acted on them, we could have 
you know, progressed a little more than we did, but we didn't, may not have acted on them. So this has been occurring our whole life. It's not something new, but once you become aware, it just, it, it, it's almost like the, the, the shields are off your eyes, you know, mm-hmm. you know, you kind of looking at life through a, a you know, rose-colored glasses, so to speak, but you really don't have glasses on because now you can see, you know, and, and you're you're open to what's happening. So and, it's yeah, and I think for most of us, I, we were talking about this a little bit before, is when you're setting a goal, don't be realistic. Realistic is, and I think Will Smith said it, but it's, is is a road to mediocrity. Nobody would ever think that, hey, what I want to do is like, I want to have this device where I can listen to music, make phone calls, pay for, you know, log into my bank account, uh, use it as a GPS, uh, use it as a heart rate monitor. Shop at stores. (laughs) Email, you know, send emails out to people. You know, play ping pong. (laughs) Like, nobody ever would have thought that if you were thinking about being realistic. So I think for your goal is I want you to tempt yourself. I want you to think, how big of a goal can I make for myself that seems so unrealistic? Because here's what's going to happen if you find something that's so unrealistic. If I'm shooting for the stars. I may not hit the star, but I may land on the moon. What most people say is, how about, you know... How about I just try to get to the clouds? And most of us are still sitting in our house. So let's tempt the listeners out there, right? I want to hear your goals. Write your goals down in the comments. We want to hear them. We want to see what they are. And be big. Be a kid again. I hope that being an adult means that you no longer dream. That you no longer believe life is possible. That you've been hit so many times in your life. People say that's not realistic. Find a job that pays well, that's secure. I hope that's not what being an adult is these days. Maybe we need to find the kid in ourselves when we're writing these goals. Because to be honest, some of the goals that we had were just, I want to be a fireman. I want to be a, a teacher. I want to be an astronaut. You know what? Those exist. Those are unrealistic goals. And it goes back to what you were talking about before is, is if you ask a seven-year-old, you know, or a five-year-old or a young, young child, you know, what's your dream? What do you want to be when you grow up? If they say fireman, you know, ask them why. You know, yeah. Why do you want to be a fireman? Why do you want to be a nurse? Why, you know, ask them that question that, that you're honing in on is, is why, you know, and see what they come back with at four, five, six, seven, eight, nine years old. One of the notes, uh, Mike Dooley, you know, from The Secret from the movie he he's like why do goals need to be realistic man think way outside the box think you know think as big as you can possibly think and like you said have fun with it another another thought i had was steve jobs you know he said that the people who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the people who do now you and i are on this podcast we're chit-chatting back and forth our hope is to have an impact on one person, two people, so that they can think outside the box, you know, maybe look at life from a different angle, look at life from a different perspective and and you know, like you said, live even though your your age says that you're an adult, live life like a kid, you know, and, and when you wake up in the morning, be grateful off the bat and focus on the the good stuff that's around you because there's a lot of good you wouldn't know it you know watching watching some of the tv but there's a lot of really good stuff out there and what we're coaching on is just you know kind of looking look deep in your heart because this is where all the circuitry occurs you know the passion is in your heart so think in in and look deep in your heart as to what what it is you want out of life you may have a an awesome life right now let's we can get it from good to great hmm. and beyond so those are just a couple of thoughts yeah. and and we talk about steve jobs we talk about 
the the Les Browns, the Tony Robbins. We talk about all. You talk about myself, even even Chad. You look at us. We're having a conversation with you. You know, I'm traveling all over the world doing the work that I do. Chad's doing the work that he does. We're no different than you. You don't have to be a superstar. You don't have to be a professional athlete, actor, whatever, to make an impact on the world. You don't have to do that. You can be who you are with the education you have and change lives. And I, I don't know how we're doing for time, but this is <laughs> this is kind of what happens when we start talking, man. It's just it it <laughs> unfolds, which I love. So there's a story about a little kid who's at the beach, and there are thousands of starfish that have run you know washed up on shore, and there's a little kid, you know, four or five years old, a dreamer. You know, he's on the beach, he's taking one starfish at a time and just launching the starfish out into the water. And older gentleman comes up to him and and says, "Little boy, what?" What are you doing? There are thousands of starfish here. You're never going to save the lives of all of these starfish. So the little boy doesn't say anything. He just he squats down, he picks up another starfish, looks up at the older man, tosses that starfish out into the water. He says, I saved the life of that starfish. Mm-hmm. And then he just kept going. You know? Little kids, let's... Let's be kids, man. <laughs> Let's think like children. Well, I mean, we got to be mature at times. <laughs> Let's think like and children. And dream like children. And I know when we have the goals that we want, it's not always going to be smooth sailing. There's going to be obstacles that we're going to hit. There's going to be hurdles we got to jump over. But that's what next week is for. That's what next call is for. When you're on the path, when you've decided your why, and you're living your dream, at some point, you're going to hit some hurdles. And the next call, the next podcast is going to be exactly about that. Overcoming obstacles and living life. And learning a few few ways that you can, if your trains, or if you're not on path, you know how to get back on path and still go after that goal. Because... If there's one, you know, summary statement or, or summarization of the call or tonight's podcast, it's find that goal that just that drives it, that brings you to tears. Mm-hmm. All right, and and once you find that why, like AK mentioned, you're you're gonna know it, you're gonna feel it. So, thank you. Thank you. Until next time. Rock and roll. <laughs> Hang loose. All right. <laughs>